Assalamu alaikum, hello everyone, um, welcome to the video. I'm gonna solve some uh, topical questions, paper 4, um, topic 7 or chapter 11, acid bases and salts, IGCSE chemistry, so let's begin. Uh, question 1, this is May, June 2017, paper 4, 1, question 2, A and B. Um, some oxides of some elements are listed, so here we have, this is some oxides, here we have um, carbon monoxide, then carbon dioxide, sodium oxide, magnesium oxide, aluminium oxide, blah, blah, blah. Letter A here uh, answers the following questions using only oxides from the list. Each oxide may be used once, more than once, or not at all. So give the formula of an oxide. So we need only here to put the formula for the oxide needed. Letter I here, which is the main cause of acid drain. So when we look at the word acid, so actually we look for acidic oxide and acidic oxide. So we need to take a look quickly for the acidic oxides. So for example, here we have carbon. You, need, you know that carbon uh, burns an oxygen to reduce carbon dioxide. And here's another element which is sulfur. Also sulfur burns an oxygen to reduce sulfur dioxide. And here we have phosphorus also burns an oxygen to reduce phosphorus pentoxides. So you see guys, here we have carbon, and here we have also sulfur, and here we have phosphorus. If you noted that all of them are classified as non-metals, okay? So we can say non-metal oxides, usually they produce acidic oxides. So acid drains, of course, should be caused by an acidic oxide. If we come back to the list, so we will find, as you see, here is, this is sulfur dioxide, which is the answer. Because, you know, sulfur dioxide dissolves in water, producing sulfuric acid. So this one will produce sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. This is sulfuric acid or acid drains. So the first one is sulfur dioxide. Double I, which would give a solution of pH 14 when added to water. So, of course, pH 14, it means this solution is going to be base or alkaline. So, we need also to take a look here. This is the pH scale, as you know. So, here we have the pH scale starts, as you see, by 0 and then ends with 14. So, 7, it means this is exactly neutral. So, more than 7, it means this is base. So, 14 means very strong base. Okay? So, we need actually now something like basic oxide because here is base so we need basic oxide meanwhile we need it to be a strong base so here we need to just take care this is basic oxide magnesium also is basic oxide aluminium it's not basic but aluminium is a metal um here also we have this is chromium also is a metal so, if we compare between sodium, magnesium, aluminium in the periodic table, you know, sodium is group 1, magnesium group 2, aluminium is group 3, but we said aluminium oxide is not basic already. So, if we compare between sodium and magnesium, 14, so it should be sodium because this is group 1, because it should be much stronger than magnesium, so it should be Na2O. So, this is the, the solution that gets pH 14. Okay, now this is V, which is amphoteric. You know, guys, the word amphoteric means that this oxide reacts with the acids and also can react with bases because it's amphoteric. It means it has properties of acids and some properties of, uh, sorry, of metals and non-metals. So it can act as two roles. So here we have, this is the one I told you, this is aluminium oxide. And also we can take a look uh, so here we have two examples, actually the first one which is aluminium oxide, as you see, and second one, finally, this is zinc oxide. So you can, guys, you can memorize these two oxides, Al2O3 aluminium oxides and ZnO, which is zinc oxide. These two examples are examples of amphoteric oxides, and as you see, for example, this is Al2O3 can react with HCl, so now Al2 works as a base, because it works with acid. And secondly, you can see that it reacted with NaOH, which is now base. So now Al2O3 works as an acid. 
So as you see, that's the meaning of the word amphoteric. Okay? So the answer is going to be A, L, 2, O, 3. Uh, VI, which is neutral. Actually, neutral oxide, it means it doesn't react with um, acidic oxides or, sorry, with acids or it doesn't react with bases. So it's a neutral. It doesn't react. So which one is going to be? Um, the neutral oxide also we need to take a look quickly so this is neutral oxides so you can take or you can pick now these two examples here we have carbon monoxide and here we have dinitrogen oxide they are two examples also you need to memorize so carbon monoxide and dinitrogen oxide both of them are called neutral oxides so this is also from the definition you can see oxides uh, they neither uh, acidic or basic, so they are neutral. So we can pick from the list, so we can find this is carbon monoxide, this one. So carbon monoxide is neutral oxide, so we can put CO. Okay? Um, so actually, guys, in this part, you need to memorize all of these uh, examples and the classification as well. Now this is letter B, amphoteric oxides and neutral oxides are different from each other. Um, I, what is meant by the term amphoteric oxides? So I think we said it a little early. So amphoteric oxides, this is an oxide that reacts with acids and with bases. So, if this is the meaning of the word amphoteric oxide. So, double I, what's meant by the term neutral oxide? I think we said it also a little early. So, this is an oxide that does not react, does not react with acids or bases. Okay? So this is for question. So I think the question is a very good question to revive the point of oxides. So I think we can summarize now the point of these oxides. So actually we have four different kinds of oxides. We have acidic oxides. And we have basic oxides. Also we have amphoteric, amphoteric oxides. And we have neutral oxides so for everyone this is acidic basically they are non-metal oxide non-metal oxides for example non-metal like we said sulfur dioxide that causes acidic rains we have also carbon dioxide and we have nitrogen dioxide all of them are called acidic oxides Basic oxides, so basically they are oxides of metals, so they are metal oxides. For example, we said Na2O, so this is sodium oxide. We have MgO, magnesium oxide, and so on. Amphoteric oxides, we said they are, or they can react with acids and with bases, so we have two examples, Al2O3, and we have zinc oxide. Finally, we have neutral oxide. They don't react with acids or with also bases. So we took two examples. Also, we can say carbon monoxide, CO, and we have by nitrogen oxide. Okay. So next one. Uh, this question two May June twenty seventeen. Also, paper for one, but this is question three A, C, and D. Uh, magnesium sulfate and lead 2 sulfate are examples of salts. A student prepared magnesium sulfate, magnesium sulfate, this is MgSO4 crystals starting from magnesium carbonate. So this is MgCO3. Um, the student carried out the experiment in four steps. Okay, so here we have step one. A student added excess magnesium carbonate to small volume of dilute sulfuric acid until no more magnesium carbonate would react. 
So, so we can write down the equation of the following. So here we have magnesium carbonate plus sulfuric acid H2SO4. So we will have MgSO4, normal double substitution, MgSO4 plus carbon dioxide gas plus H2O. Um, and then the student, uh, the student filtrate the mixture. Step three, the student heated the filtrate obtained from step two until it was saturated. And then step four, the student allowed the hot filtrate to cool to room temperature and then remove the crystals which form. Okay, so now let's start. This is I. How did the student know when the reaction had finished in step one? Let's come back to step one. Here's the student added excess magnesium carbonate. Take care, this is excess magnesium carbonate to a small volume of dilute sulfuric acid. So, of course, the small volume of the uh, sulfuric acid will be consumed. And then, so how can we know that um, the reaction had finished? So, if we check this equation, you will find here we have carbon dioxide gas. Bubbles. So, of course, we can know that the reaction has finished in case of no more this. You know, this carbon dioxide gas makes kind of effervescence because of these bubbles. So, we can say there is no more effervescence. No more effervescence. So, it means now that the reaction has had finished. Okay. So, double I named the residue in step two. So, in step two, the student filtered the mixture. So, what is the residue? If you check also again the products, you will find this is MgSO4. This is the salt we prepared. And you check this is magnesium sulfate. So, this magnesium sulfate is the residue we talk about. So, this is MgSO4. Okay, so triple I, a saturated solution form is in step three. What is a saturated solution? So step three, the student heated the filtrate obtained from step two until it was saturated. So actually, I have a saturated solution. So this is the solution. Where no more solute can dissolve in the solvent at that temperature. And you have to take care, guys, because here you should mention the temperature because, you know, if we increase the temperature or decrease the temperature, so it will affect the solubility because uh, you know, temperature is one important factor from the factors affecting the solubility. So this is, you find here also, this is two marks. So one mark for the definition and the second mark for to mention the temperature. Okay, IV. Explain why magnesium sulfate crystals form during step four. So if we check step four again, the student allowed the hot filter to cool to room temperature. So if you check the word cool, and I said a little earlier that decreasing temperature and increasing also temperature affecting the solubility. So, of course, we can say decreasing temperature decreases the solubility. Okay, so now let's go with the next one. Letter C lead um, to sulfate, PPSO4 is insoluble. Um, describe how you would prepare a pure dry sample of lead to sulfate crystals starting from solutions of lead to nitrate. So lead to nitrate PPNO32 um, and sodium sulfate. So, sodium sulfate, Na2SO4. Take care, guys. This is aqueous solution, and this one also is aqueous solution. So, together, the, here is you see, guys, this is double substitution. So, we will have um, two 
Na NO3 aqueous also plus finally we have PP SO4 solid this is the one we need to prepare actually so we have actually guys here four marks it means we need to mention four also steps so of course the first step we need to mix these two solutions together which are this is uh, lead nitrate plus sodium sulfate so we need to say number one mix the two solutions and of course we need to stir them well so we need to mix the two solution and stir number two so after mixing the two solution they will react producing as you see these two products so we talk about the residue or the insoluble substance which is ppso4 so we need to filter this substance so number two we need to filter the insoluble magnesium sorry lead pp sulfate which is solid and then number three after filtration of the insoluble ppso4 so actually we need if you check out the products you will find here ppso4 mix it with na and o3 so we need to wash ppso4 to clean it so step three wash the internal substance or we can say the residue ppso4 and finally we need to dry after washing of course it has some water so dry the residue in a warm place okay so here we have the four steps to get the lead to sulfate uh, letter D writes the ionic equation for the reaction which takes place between solutions of lead to nitrate and sodium sulfate and also here we have to include the state symbol that's why we have here two marks so we need the ionic equation so I can copy the same equation once again to get the ionic one so here we have guys this is PP NO3 plus we have Na 2SO4 Na2SO4 to produce 2Na NO3 plus uh, PPSO4. So guys actually we need that only ionic equation to form the residue. So here on the sodium as you see here we have this is the substance we need to form so i'll put it here in the ionic equation pp so4 solid so actually we need these two ions only the positive cation on the left side and the negative anion on the right side so actually we have this one pp and we need so4 so i can write here pp you know pp is two plus and we need to write the here include the state symbol so this is aqueous plus here we have SO4 SO4 and this is 2 minus aqueous and to produce PPSO4 which is solid okay hopefully you find this helpful thank you so much guys see you